Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Be opened. This is the theme of our reflection this Sunday, and it comes from the gospel itself, the words of Jesus. We have been trying to look at God's saving action and how this image of opening what used to be closed is a good description of God's uh, intention and what life is all about. In the first reading from Isaiah, we see how God's saving action is depicted in terms of opening the eyes of the blind, opening the ears of the deaf, loosening the tongue of the mute, opening the joints and the limbs of the lame, and even the deserts will be opened and water will gush forth, opening what used to be closed. And then in the second reading, St. James talks about a blindness, a closeness of the eyes where we do not see human dignity as it is. We respect the rich, but actually we are respecting their clothes, their money, not the human person. It's a form of blindness. We discriminate against the poor, but we don't see the real dignity. So in either case, we are blind. We do not see the person. We see only the externals. And that's a form of blindness leading to injustice. We need to save the dignity of the human person by opening, letting our eyes be opened to see what human dignity truly is. In the gospel, Jesus encounters this man, a deaf mute. And these two situations are often interconnected. The incapacity to hear and therefore leading also to a speech impediment. You see, even in the human person, the interconnectedness of our members, our bodily members. Now Jesus, Jesus, using his touch, his proximity, another act of incarnation as it were, a sign of his being flesh, and using also his spittle, touching the ear and touching the tongue of the person, you know, which is a divine touch, but also a purely human touch on the part of Jesus, human and divine touch, recognizing in this deaf mute a child of God, even a sign of a desert situation, for the deaf is cut off from communication, from the beautiful sounds of the earth and the beautiful sounds of the human voice and human messages. 
this person is also cut off from the capacity to speak, to share through speech what is deepest in his thoughts and in his heart. So being deaf and being mute, this is a form of isolation. And in the thinking of the Jews, being isolated from human beings and from the earth is a form of death. This person is an image of death. But Jesus comes to save from death. Jesus comes to save from isolation. And so with his touch, with God's touch, and with his human touch, and with his speech, which is also divine speech, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. Be opened. Be opened. And the person is restored to life, to communion with the rest of humanity and the rest of creation. So the reaction of the people is fair and just. For salvation has come. Salvation which is communion. Salvation which is life with and for others. Salvation which is solidarity. That is the desire of God. Remember how Jesus called Lazarus out of the tomb? I could almost hear the same words. Here it is, be opened. But be open meaning come out of your isolation. Come out of your own world where you heard nothing, where you spoke nothing. Come out and be with us. Be with us now. On this Sunday, this Sunday, I would like to make a special appeal. Let us revitalize our ministry to the deaf and the mute so that through our ministry they may experience once again the divine and human touch of Jesus so that they will hear and experience being opened to life, to community, and to salvation. And during this pandemic, when we are getting used to being isolated, to being locked in, for a good reason. Let not that situation end there. As we are being asked to be locked in, let us see also what God is opening. Sometimes we lament being locked in, but the Lord is opening so many other possibilities. But do we see them? Do we see them? I'm sure God wants this situation to be not simply a situation of damnation, but a situation of salvation. If we only open our eyes, our ears, our tongues, where does God open possibilities for life? The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. of Our Lady. The woman who, upon hearing that she had been favored by God with the singular dignity of being the mother of the Son of the Most High God, took it really as a grace and uttered the words, I am the servant. the greater her calling, the humbler she was. And in her Magnificat, she did not sing her own praises, but the praises of God 
who found her a humble lady worthy of such favor. The Lord has done great things for me. So it is the name of the Lord that must be glorified. And in her blessedness, she did not forget the poor, the hungry, the downtrodden in Israel. Yes, the humble face of God, Jesus, found a dwelling place in the humble womb of the humble lady of Nazareth, Mary. And in them, we know humility is true greatness. the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <laughs> 